On Thursday, Russia has said that nuclear-capable strategic bombers have been sent to fly over the Pacific Ocean and East China Sea in a pre-arranged flight mission. Russia's defense ministry said that the jets flew over neutral waters and were accompanied by an early warning and control aircraft. During parts of the route, the bombers were escorted by South Korean and Japanese military jets. Russia has actively voiced concerns about tensions in the Korean Peninsula due to North Korea's recent missile tests for its nuclear missile program. As far as nuclear is concerned, this country, us, we need a shield because Russia is unstable, a North Korea is unstable. Initiative. We need a missile defense shield. And if we don't have one and if we don't start developing, and now, you know, people used to criticize Reagan. The fact is now it's very developable. And we need a shield. If you want to build this strategic defense shield to prevent against missiles, you have to go ahead and negotiate with the Russians a change in the 1972 ABM, the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty. What if the Russians say no, no can do? Well, look, you just said it, a change in 1972. A treaty that was made in 1972, who knew what was going to happen in terms of technology? It's time for a change, and we have to sit down with the Russians and many others. Look at North Korea. North Korea is developing missiles like nobody has ever seen. And we better do something rather quickly with them, hopefully through negotiation. But we better do something rather quickly with them. Russia What if, on, on the North Korean front, what if the North Koreans don't play ball, develop uh, a nuclear capability, go forward with their missile development? Does the United States act unilaterally? Excuse me. If, if spoken to correctly, correctly, they will play ball. But is there something the United States should be thinking about doing as far as North Korea's potential nuclear development? Absolutely. That it's they should be thinking about it. And frankly, like if, what? Give me an example. I'll, I'll say this. You go in, you start negotiating. And if you don't stop them from doing it, you will have to take rather drastic actions. Because if you don't take them now, you're going to be in awfully big trouble in five years from now when they have more missiles than we do. We're a bunch of saps. There's no question that North Korea is developing missiles. We give them nuclear power plants. We give them tremendous aid because we thought we could bribe them into stop develop. Well, they're developing. So much so that South Korea is now developing their own missile systems in order to protect. And I'm, almost, I'm, I'm really not sure I can blame them. But North Korea is totally out of control. And would you rather have a very, very serious chat with them now? And if necessary, you might have to do something fairly drastic. Or would you rather have to go after them in five years when they have more nuclear warheads and missiles than we do? When you say something fairly drastic, that sounds like you're suggesting a potential Israeli-like uh, unilateral strike against the Osirak reactor in Iraq in the, uh, in the 80s. You can never rule it out. What Israel did was fantastic, and you can never rule it out. And you know what? If you ruled it out, you couldn't talk to them. Why would they? The only thing they're afraid of is exactly what you just said. That's what they're afraid of. That's what they're concerned with. You'll most likely, with that attitude, be able to make a deal. But if you can't, you have to react. And let me tell you something. Don't react in five years, because if you react in five years, nothing's going to be left. You don't have to worry about your social security system anymore. A short time ago, an American airplane dropped one bomb on Hiroshima and destroyed its usefulness to the enemy. That bomb has more power than 20,000 tons of TNT. The Japanese began the war from the air at Pearl Harbor. They have been repaid many fold, and the end is not yet. With this bomb, we have now added a new and revolutionary increase in destruction to supplement the growing power of our armed forces. In their present form, these bombs are now in production, and even more powerful forms are in development. It is an atomic bomb. It is a harnessing of the basic power of the universe. The force from which the sun draws its power has been loosed against those who brought war to the Far East. We have spent more than two billion dollars on the greatest scientific gamble in history, and we have won. But the greatest marvel is not the size of the enterprise, its secrecy, or its cost. 
but the achievement of scientific brains in making it work. North Korea, uh, very quickly, we don't have much time, but how soon before they have another test, either of a, of a nuclear bomb or an ICBM? I think they can test almost at any time. Uh, I don't think there's any reason to think that the absence of testing activity shows a political decision to try and come closer to us. I don't think they're uh, in fear of us yet. I don't think they respect us. Mm. And I don't think there's any point in negotiating with them. Keeping our eyes fixated up north of the border, with its back turned to the rest of the world, the reclusive state is focused mainly on its bargaining chip, its weapons program. In terms of missile development, it's been pushing ahead at a faster speed than ever before. The latest test launch proved the regime's nearing a level where it can strike the U.S. mainland with nuclear-tipped ICBM. Wu Zhangyi illustrates where the Hermit Kingdom stands in relevant technologies. Uh, ICBM 그 미사, 탄도 미사일을 완성하고 어, 거기에 핵탄두를 탑재해서 무기화하게 되는 것을 레드라인이라고 생각합니다. 지금 북한이 점점 그 레드라인의 인계, 인계치에 다가가고 있다고 생각합니다. During the decades-old tug of war with North Korea, the general understanding of North Korea crossing the line has been the regime being able to strike the continental United States with a nuclear-tipped ICBM. How one arrives at that assessment is complicated, but the North's second ICBM test in late July did suggest that it might be possible. North Korea has shown us that its missile can fly up to 7 or 8,000 kilometers if launched on a flatter trajectory that can reach the western coast of America. Pyongyang's final destination is Washington, the center of the U.S. mainland. To make that happen, there are two crucial technologies Pyongyang needs to develop. First, having a light enough nuclear warhead or strong enough engine to reach long-distance targets. And second, having the missile successfully re-enter the atmosphere. How far has North Korea come in these two technologies? And what's the international community's assessment? To increase the missile's airborne distance, the nuclear warhead has to be as small and light as possible. According to the U.S.-based Washington Post, a confidential U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency analysis early this month suggested that Pyongyang has produced a miniaturized nuclear warhead. Japan's defense white paper also wrote the North may have miniaturized nuclear warheads. The ideal weight of a nuclear warhead designed for an ICBM is generally seen to be around the 500 kilogram range. But even if the warhead isn't at the ideal weight, experts say if the engine's strong enough, Pyongyang's missile can reach long-distance targets. 
If the North can fire its missile to the U.S. with its current engine, that means the North has lightened its warhead enough. I've conducted a virtual simulation after the recent launches. The North's missile can carry a 700-kilogram nuclear warhead to the U.S. with the engine it has now.